The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, a resurrection on Easter Sunday. I felt like God was sweeping me off my feet. One addict's new life. Christ is what sets people free. And the prayers of David. David had a divine revelation. And the promise of a Messiah. The one on that cross is about to change mankind. And David saw that. How the Psalms points us to Christ. And that's the very word that Jesus used. It is finished. On today's 700 Club. Hello and welcome to the 700 Club. Thank you for joining us on this Good Friday. All around the world, Christians remember this day when Jesus offered himself to be crucified and died for our sins. As he was near death, Jesus quoted from the book of Psalms. That same psalm had been written a thousand years earlier. And as Paul Strand reports, it contains vivid descriptions of what Jesus was enduring on the cross. Jesus on the cross said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When I first heard those words as a new Christian, it really shook my faith because it kind of seemed like Jesus was losing his. Well, when you learn what's actually going on with those words, rather than shaking your faith, it may well supercharge it. Jesus was quoting Psalms 22, verse 1, word for word. While he could hardly breathe up on the cross, with those few words he was saying, go read Psalms 22. Since it was written a thousand years before Christ's birth and also before crucifixion was invented, Psalms 22 is an amazing prophetic look at exactly what would happen that historic crucifixion day down to the tiny details. I went through it verse by verse with Bishop Bart Pierce of Baltimore, Maryland's Rock City Church. First off, Jesus knew he wasn't being forsaken. He volunteered to make this blood sacrifice because as the pure lamb of God, he was the only one who could take away the sins of all mankind by shedding his perfect blood for them. He was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It's the purest lamb there's ever been. There was no pure blood than his blood. But because a holy God can't be in the presence of sin. And he was turning his face because he couldn't look at sin. King David describes Christ on the cross declaring, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night and am not silent. Pierce points out how Christ was crying out from the cross, both in the day and night, as God turned the world dark for three hours. Well, when darkness came on the earth, it says, and there was thundering and lightning and the earth shook. Verse 12 says, strong bowls of Bashan encircle me. That's likely symbolic talk for the beefy bull-like Roman soldiers who tortured Jesus and nailed him to the cross. By the way, when it says strong bowls encircle me, the phrase is better translated crown me. Remember, it was the Roman soldiers who jammed a crown of thorns onto Jesus' head. Jews in that day referred to Gentiles as dogs. And verse 16 says, Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Psalms 22, a thousand years in advance, perfectly describes Roman Gentiles nailing Christ's hands and feet to the cross. Before that was ever even thought about. Verse 18 says, They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. King David prophetically describes the Romans both dividing and casting lots for Christ's garments. And his description of the agony caused by crucifixion is eerily accurate. Verse 14, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted away within me. All your liquids run out of your body and they go to your feet. Verse 15, my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. He would have become so parched of mouth, he was losing his liquids in his body. Verses 7 and 8 say, all who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Then listen to how Matthew 27 describes what actually happened. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads. And the elders mocked him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him. David had a divine revelation. And you can no longer, once you read uh, Psalm 22, you cannot separate it from the crucifixion, from the story in the Gospels. The two must stay together. The second half of Psalms 22 turns powerfully positive. It speaks of eternal salvation in verse 26. They who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. And in verse 29, all who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive. Well, they can't, but Jesus can give them eternal life. The one on that cross is about to change mankind. And David saw that. 
Verses 30 and 31 conclude the psalm by describing a faith going on into the ages, saying future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, for he has done it. And Pierce shares how the psalm delivers a final surprising revelation. So it says there in the Amplified, that last statement in verse 31, it doesn't say it, it's done. It says the word, it is finished. And that's the very word that Jesus used, it is finished. Jesus on the cross said the exact first words of Psalms 22, and his final words were the exact last words of that psalm. He definitely was pointing us to this amazing thousand-year-old prophecy about his death and its eternal results. Paul Strand, CBN News. Well, I don't know about you, but I have found reading the Psalms on a daily basis is so good for the soul, especially today. On Good Friday, to spend time in Psalm 22 is just a magnificent experience. And to think how God has woven this together over the centuries to see the plan unfold as David is lamenting and expressing his heart and to see the prophetic words he had for our Savior a thousand years later is just beautiful. And the fact that we have relationship with the Father because of that dark day with so much death and brutality, but the Father did something beautiful out of it. And what he did was make relationship with the Father possible because of the amazing sacrifice of Jesus, Terry. It is a beautiful thing to experience. And it's also a reminder to us, I think, that he does that for us. Yes. He makes something beautiful out of the ashes Amen. of our lives. It's just such a huge picture of Great who he reminder. is, isn't it? Yeah. Well, come